Hey, this is Ant bringing you a Unreal Engine tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show, be showing you how to create a vector-based moving platform. So I'll quickly demonstrate that now. So if you go into the viewport, you can see here there's a platform and it's got different positions set in the world. If I hit play. What you'll see is you'll see the blue platform moving between different points in space. So the advantage of this one is um, you can set platform speed and also you can choose a very um, you can choose the route that the platform goes to. So I'll get into the tutorial now and we'll go for it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to create an actor that will have our moving platform code in it. So I'm going to go into the contents uh, folder here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to blueprint class and I'm going to choose an actor. I'm going to call this BP underscore moving platform and I'll call this moving platform V3. Uh, that's because I've created platforms before, so I don't want to get them mixed up. I'm going to double left click to enter this. I'm going to dock this at the top. And the first thing I'm doing here is I'm going to add a static mesh so that we can give it a visual representation. So to do that, click on add static mesh and that will appear under the components tab and next thing I need to do is go into the static mesh option here look for a chamfer box or a chamfer cube beg your pardon and we have a, a cube that we can use as a moving platform go into scale I'm going to change that to 2.0 2.0 and I'm going to choose 0.2 and as you can see, it has a visual representation. So if I drag one into the world, it's something that the player can also jump on as well because the static mesh has all the collision set up for it. Okay, so now that we've got our static mesh set up to our moving platform, it's time to go into the code. So the moving platform uses series points um, in space to move towards. And these are known as world positions. But the idea is that the designer can um, add another point to the array and the platform will move to that next. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate that now by introducing a variable. So if you go into your moving platform tab, go to the variables and under the new variable I want to set a vector. I'm going to make it public and I'm going to call this platform positions. Oops. And the right hand uh, panel here under details, I want to make this show 3D widget and hit compile. Now to quickly demonstrate this, you'll see under the platform positions, you've got platform positions here. However, it's currently it's set to a singular value, but I don't want that, I want an array of values. So all you do, go back into your blueprints Choose the drop down and select array. Hit compile. Now, what you've got here is you've got array elements. So, just for say for example, I'm going to add one here. I've got the platform position. If you select the platform position, move it out, and then let's add another one. Select the platform position there. And we'll add the final one, select this, we'll move one over here. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now, but we can refine it later. So what's happening is, these platform positions are ultimately where the platform will move to. Now, to get it back to the origin point, we'll add a final one, and we'll just keep it at zero. So as it moves through the code, it'll be using these to determine where this uh, platform needs to go. In this case, it'll just make a nice round journey, so like a square pattern. So going back into the graph, this is what we'll be using to drive the, the logic. However, th there needs to be a little bit more code added to this for it to work. And I'll explain that in the next step. Okay, so let's start coding the, the first bit we'll need on Event Begin Play. Um, we don't need actor 
we get an overlap, so we'll delete that. However, we will need the event tech in a bit. So, selecting platform positions, you can either hold control or you can let go and get it as a getter. Drag it into the graph. From platform position, we're going to do a for each loop. So, for each loop's in place. Now, okay, well, what do we do with these platform positions? Now, the first thing we need to do is we know where they are in local space, if you have a look in here, but it's not based in world space, and that's important for this because it won't work. So we need to convert these local positions into world positions so that the platform knows where to move to in terms of where it is and where that position is relative to world space. So what we do, we right click, we get actor transform, we drag off the return value and we're looking for something called transform location. And what it's doing is, if you hover over it, um, if an object's here, it will transform a position from local space to world space. Go into the array elements, plug that into this. Double left click to create a node so it's a bit more tidier. And then what I want to do is, well, I want a separate array that's uh, independent. It can't be edited. And I want to add this to a new array. Now, what's going to happen here is, if we connect that up, I want these to be known as the world space uh, positions. So, create a new variable. Call these world space positions. And what will happen is each of the nodes, each of the vector values inside of platform positions will be looped through and it'll convert the location from local space into world space and it'll add it to a new array called world space positions. So another variable I want to create straight away is going to be called current index. So if you look in the world, you'll see that each one of these has an index value. And what will happen is the platform will need to know which index to move towards so they can get its position out of the array. So I want to create a value for that so that it can be accessed and changed as, it, as the platform moves from one position to another. So under variables, hit add, hit the drop down. I want an integer, however, I don't want this to be an array, I want it to be in a singular. And I'm going to call this current index and hit compile. And for the last sort of step of this, I'm going to drag it in as a setter and I've set the current index to zero. Reason why I'm doing this is when the hit begin play and the platform starts moving, I want it to move towards that platform position here. Okay, it's time to start coding the logic for this. So we're going to be using the event tick uh, in order to drive the, the movements on this platform. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag into the graph the world, uh, world space positions. And from that, I'm going to get a copy. And I'm going to plug in the current index. From this, I'm going to uh, right click on this node promotes a variable and it's going to create a vector and this one is going to be called target location so it's accessing the array getting the current index and setting a vector value next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get actor location I'm going to promote uh, this to a variable and I'm going to call this the current location So, as I said, this is a vector-based one. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using vectors to calculate direction. So what we're going to do is drag in the target location. We're going to subtract. And we're going to subtract the current location. And what this allows you to do is this um, allows you to create a direction. So promote this to a variable. And... We're going to call this target direction. So within vectors, and I think it's something to do with the Euler uh, principle, 
I'm not sure the exact name, but if you get the target location B and then subtract by A, that will give you direction. Once you've done that, well, we've got the target direction, so we know where the platform needs to move to in terms of direction. So what we need to do is we need to think, well, okay, then we know where we're going, but we need to obviously calculate a direction to move towards. So to do that, we're going to drag in a copy of our target direction and we're going to do something called normalizing. So it's American Spellings. Go to normalize. And then we're going to type it in a multiply. Now, what normalizing does is it makes a, a range between 0 and 1. And this is good if you're trying to move an object to one space to another because what it does is it gives you a value to multiply against to set a speed. So that's what we're going to create now with our next variable. Go to add, go to the drop down, and we're going to have a float, and we're going to call this speed. If you want, you can make this public so that you can change it on different platforms. Drag this in, plug it into here, and then what's going to do is it's currently set to zero. I'm going to set that to be 100 as default, but you can change that to whatever value you want. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply. And what I want to do is I want to get the world delta seconds so that it's taking into account the, uh, the time between last frame uh, rather than just using the tick, otherwise it could run too fast. Once you've done that, I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call this distance to move. So, that's essentially, oh, quick tidy didn't help me at that time. So let's just recap. So we're getting a position out of the world space array based on the current index. We're setting a target location. We're getting the actor's current location. We're getting a direction by subtracting the target location, uh, the current location from the target location, and then setting it as a direction. And we're normalizing this so that we can use a speed variable to move the platform over um, a set distance over time towards the target location. And then from that, we're setting a distance to move. So that will basically say, okay, based on the speed, the target direction, this is how fast it's going to move or the distance to move in that particular frame or tick. So that's the first part. We'll go into the second part and we'll, we'll finish this off and then we can go into demonstration. Okay, so it's now time to code the last bit of this to get this platform moving. So after the distance to move, we're going to get act location. We're going to add distance to move. And we're going to set the act location. So we have this actor location, drag this here, connect that up. So this effectively will move it to the first point. However, we have more than one point in the array and we want it to move between different positions. So we need to add logic to order to check for that. Also, we need to determine if the, the target, if the actual current location is in with distance of the target location. So all we do, we get the target location, we get the current location, we subtract them from one another, and then what we need is we need the vector length. So what this does is it returns a float value that actually gives the actual uh, unreal distance between these two points. And what I want to do is I want to check to see if the, uh, the point this distance is less than 10, 10 units. Return a branch and connect this up. If this is true, what I want to do next is, well, I want to see if there's another point to move to. So 
we get the current index, we do an equals, and then we get the world space positions, get the last index, and we plug this into here. So what that's doing is that's determining if the current index equals the last index in the array. And this is important because what we want to do is if it does, we want it to revert back to the initial zero. So if I drag in the current index on true and set that to zero, what will happen is if it reaches index uh, three here, where basically where it started, it'll say, well, I'm at the end of the array. I need to be set to platform position zero. And that's what will happen. If it doesn't though, and for example, if I drag in current index and do a, an increment integer, for example, I don't want it to basically go, well, set it back to zero. I want it to go to the next point in the list. So say if the current index equals zero, um, that's obviously not the last index because the last index is free, but that'll hit the false statement. However, I want it to go to platform position one instead. So what will happen is it'll increment that, set that to be one. And then when the code fires again, it's going to get the world space position from this array based on the current index and set that as a new target location. So let's give that demonstration in action now. Hopefully it'll work, but we can always debug it if it doesn't. So let's hit play. So you can see the moving platform go into one position, two, three, zero, oh, sorry, three, zero. And that's going to one. That's going to two, and that's going to three. So the code works, that's which is good. So just as a quick recap, all we're doing is we're getting the length between the two points. Sorry, we're setting first off. We're setting the set actor location by adding a distance move and setting it. Then we're checking to see if it's in ten units of the the next point. If it is, check the current index. If it's not the last index, increment it and then get set it to a new location. If it is, set it to the last, uh, the first index, which is zero, and then it can, the process can start again. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. What I'll do is I'll upload a copy of this project to GitHub so that you can download it and have a look at the code yourself. Um, I did forget that it was Engine 5.2. So uh, hopefully you find this useful, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.